Welcome to Module 7 of the UNCDF and IDEP course on Inclusive Digital Transformation. In this module, we will speak about e-government. My name is Peter Sparabom, and I will be presenting this module. According to the African Union's Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, effective government is the cornerstone for digital and growth. E-government, built on strong foundation pillars, supports the achievement of a number of sustainable development goals. E-government brings many economic and social benefits. In the 2009 the World Bank's primer on e-government already pointed to e-government's potential to improve access to and deliver of public services and information to enhance transparency, openness of, and engagement with the administration, to increase productivity of businesses, citizens, and employees, to improve efficiency in the design and delivery of government services, and to contribute to broader government economic and social outcomes. In this module, we cover e-government, open government data, digital identity, and smart cities. E-government itself can be divided into e-administration, which is the use and application of information technologies in public administration to streamline and integrate workflows and processes, e-data, which is the use and application of ICT to effectively manage data and information. E-services, which is the use of ICT to enhance public service delivery. And e-participation, which is the use of ICT to expand communication channels for engagement and empowerment of people. Now, what is the state of e-government in Africa? Let's start with e-administration. E-administration allows government agencies to enhance their efficiency. For years, efforts to digitalize government administration have mirrored the vertical silos of the government organization and often that of donors. Each sectoral ministry or agency automated their own data, processes and systems independently from the others. There's increasing recognition of the need for a whole of government approach and the creation of interoperability between systems. In 2014, more African countries had invested in core government administration systems than in the development of online services for citizens and businesses. The principal challenges to the digital transformation of government administration are the complexity and the cost of the operation and civil servants' resistance to change. E-services allow governments to offer better services to citizens and businesses, as well as promote transparency and accountability within the public sector. In 2020, all African countries but one had national portals and back-end systems automating core administrative tasks to, to support those portals. The most common online services offered by countries in Africa were registering a business with 70% of countries offering this service, uh, applying for a business license, 65% of countries offering this service, applying for government vacancies online, also 65%, and requesting a birth certificate, 60%. Unfortunately, reliable figures on usage are not available. A key challenge for e-services is the fact that users need access to infrastructure, digital skills, and often also digital identity to be able to use them. Another challenge is making sure the services are adapted to the needs of users and sufficiently secure for them to trust that they are safe. The 
Then e-participation. E-participation allows governments to deepen their engagement with citizens. Citizens' participation is a key pillar for a healthy democracy. UN DESA's e-participation index measures progress in the area of e-information, e-consultation and e-decision-making. Among the 63 countries worldwide at the very high e-participation index level, South Africa is the only country from the continent. Only 8 out of 54 African countries assessed performed e-consultation in the sectors of justice, environment, social protection, employment and health. Despite the multiplication of platforms for e-participation, in many cases uptake remains low. Key challenges here include understanding the motivations for citizens to participate online, the reluctance from public institutions to share agenda setting and decision-making power, and linking e-participation initiatives with formal institutional processes for people to see their impact. E-data allow governments to increase their own productivity, accountability and inclusivity, as well as that of society as a whole. Many countries in Africa are moving towards policies that facilitate or impose analysis of government data to help improve public policies and services. sharing of government data to improve intra- or inter-agency coordination and collaboration, and transparency of government data to improve accountability for government action. Open government data, or OGD, allows academics, the private sector and civil society to make innovative use of high-value public data sets, such as geospatial, Earth observation and environmental data, meteorological da data, household survey data, companies and company ownership data, and mobility data. The European Union defines OGD as data held by the public sector, funded mostly by or under the control of public authorities, that is restriction-free for anyone to access, use, modify, or share. In 2020, almost 40% of African countries were making certain health, education and employment data freely available. Challenges in this area include a general lack of understanding of data and data science, low political priority, resource constraints and quality, security and privacy concerns. Digital Identification Schemes, or EID, facilitate e-government as well as the provision of private e-services. The World Bank defines digital identity as a set of electronically captured and stored attributes and or credentials that uniquely identify a person. EID schemes enable countries to leapfrog the building of traditional paper-based ID systems. Many countries have a range of functional identification schemes. For example, for elections, tax, social protection. To guarantee identity for all, governments can either harmonize existing functional systems or create a universal foundational scheme. Many African countries have decided to replace their fragmented functional schemes with a fully digital foundational system and South Africa has so far implemented the most advanced and comprehensive digital ID system on the continent. Regional bodies in West and East Africa have been piloting programs for interoperable EID systems that facilitate cross-border travel and services. 
Given the complexity, cost and time needed to set up a foundational digital identity system, the challenge is to prevent wasted investment in redundant and conflicting functional systems. Smart cities use emerging technologies to improve local government. UNDESA defines smart cities as local governments that harness and leverage cutting-edge technologies to accelerate sustainable development. In some African countries, governments are creating entirely new smart cities, whereas in other countries, municipalities are making existing cities smarter. That smart cities remain the exception rather than the rule is largely the result of a lack of awareness among national and local governments of the potential advantages from using emerging technologies. How to increase the development and usage of digital services and emerging technologies? Political commitment to e-government can be translated into action through a national e-government strategy or master plan. To ensure buy-in and implementation, it is important to take a whole-of-government and participatory approach throughout the strategy development cycle. A national e-government strategy identifies the policies, laws and regulations that need to be put in place or reformed, including those on privacy, cybersecurity, access to information, transparency, digital government, intellectual property, open government data, national security, interoperability, etc. Digital transformation requires a significant and long-term investment and a large part of the budget involves user research, workflow re-engineering capacity building and change management. To this, one needs to add the costs of changes to the legal framework, the ongoing expenses of governance and coordination, and monitoring and evaluation for the purpose of constant improvement. Governments that wish to accelerate their digital transformation can build on a number of international initiatives. These include the UN Public Administration Network's SDG 16 Knowledge Hub, the Open Government Partnership, or OGP, the UN Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, the World Bank's Identification for Development Initiative, the UN's United for Smart Sustainable Cities Initiative, and the International Telecommunications Union's standardization sector, which has several initiatives on smart sustainable cities. Thank you for your attention and interest. The next module is about cybersecurity and data privacy. I look forward to meeting you there.